What do you do to keep the fat off your arms? Uh, dude, I, I'm, I, I'm fat. I don't keep the fat off my body, you know. Less fat than I used to be, but I'm still fat. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's any way to reduce fat distribution in particular parts of the body. I've seen a lot of pseudoscience about that. I think, like, if you want to make it look like you're disproportionately less fat in an area, you just have to like move up the muscle, right? Or uh, you can dehydrate. But again, that's not like a specific area. That's like, uh, it's also not sustainable for long. Or yeah, lipo, I guess. Uh, but that's kind of an extreme, yeah, kind of an extreme thing, you know. Because I think the way you burn fat is when your body needs calories and you don't have any in your stomach to digest. So it takes it from your fat cells. But I think the process by which that happens is totally disconnected from any physical process that burns the calories. Like, if your body needs calories to consume, it like it like burns the fat off just like everywhere it can get it through the blood cells, right? Or not through the blood cells, through the the capillaries, whatever they're called, the 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 lines that run through you. But I think it gets you like all over. And what like relative level of fat distribution you have comes down to the rate at which it burns from those areas versus where it goes by default. I don't know if there's like a way to control that. Lipo doesn't work when you suck out the fat, your body freaks out and produces more in that area. Is that true? It actually like redistributes it to there. That's interesting. I didn't know that. It probably doesn't do it perfectly, right? So maybe if you're like 30% body fat all over, but then you like remove like basically all the fat in one arm, maybe it'll like redistribute eventually, but it would still be a little bit less in one arm than the other. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, no medical advice here. I'm not an expert. Yeah. Also, if you eat sugar and fatty things in like the year and a half after getting lipo, you gain weight like crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't really recommend lipo or any other kind of surgical intervention unless you're doing it to prevent like, like if you need to do it immediately as a way of like preventing your lard heart from exploding tomorrow, then go for it. But um, I don't think it, it it's not a good like long term fix. Um, you, you, it's, it's about like the habits that you develop. Thankfully, losing weight can be fairly easy. There is like a genetic component to the rate at which you burn fat, but it can be fairly easy once you find the right foods for it and develop the right attitude. Um, the actual physical experience of eating fewer calories than your body needs to burn every day is usually more tolerable than a lot of people think it is because the whiplash effect of starting a diet, then going off it, then starting it, then going off it, means you're constantly in that like first week of dieting phase, which is the worst. But if you get used to eating a bit below replacement, it's um it, it's a pretty easy thing to get used to, you know? Um, it's, it's always harder at the start. Yeah, the yo-yo effect really fucking, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Moink. It's, it's people, people think that losing weight is about like willpower, and it is to an extent, but that's not the biggest part of it, I don't think. Obviously, that's like the driving force that moves it forward, but I really think that um, the big part is like a good attitude and planning. Those are the big things, you know? Um, trying to diet when you're only used to eating junk food is miserable, because if you're like, okay, I'll only eat 2,000 calories of Doritos a day, you're going to be full by noon, you know? Like, you need, you need to have, like, the right meals. There have to be, like, good, filling, tasty, nutritious meals that you can eat, that will only take up like six or eight hundred calories. You know, you have to ha you have to know what you can go for. So before anyone ever starts dieting, I would recommend um, experimenting with meal prep to try to make like good, tasty meals that are between four hundred and eight hundred calories. You know, and if you can do that, um, yeah, that's really good. It's very very helpful. Yeah, Vermin, there's so much variance. So 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 much variance. Tell me exactly what to eat, and I'll do it, Chief. <laughs> Generally speaking, good foods to eat are ones that aren't super calorie dense, but are very filling. Good things to have when you're dieting are potato based foods, not like fried potatoes or whatever, but like, you know, like baked potatoes, stuff like that can be really good. Double baked potatoes, really, really good. Um, uh, chicken, chicken breasts, super great source of protein. If you want source of protein that aren't super calorie dense, beans, anything in the bean family, bean, bean family, bean family can be really, really good. Um, yeah, tofu can be fantastic if you're here for that. Uh, a ton of stuff under the fruits and vegetables uh, blanket is obviously really good. For me personally, my big diet foods are soup, beans, potatoes, and chicken. Those are the four things that I can eat like 
600 calories of and feel really good after. Um, there are also frozen meals that you can get that tend to be pretty expensive relative to the calorie amount that you're getting, like um, HelloFresh. Oh, sorry, HelloFresh allows you to make your own meals at home. Those are pretty good, but they're expensive. Um, Lean Cuisine, some of them are pretty good. Um, Evil, E-V-O-L, can be pretty good. Doesn't it depend on the type of soup? My favorite is the um, the Campbell's Chunky Potato Bacon one. I like that one a lot. Uh, E-V-O-L. Um, tip that really helped me is daily calories don't matter as much as weekly calories. Yeah, the fuck up with that, though, Vermin, is that I can't do weekly calories because I will invariably, like, burn through them too quickly. <laughs> you know? Like, it, yeah. Um, I, I do on a daily... But different things work differently for different people. Um, yeah, it's, it's just good to experiment. The reason, the reason why a good attitude is essential, the reason why it's so fucking important is because the worst thing that you can ever do for your health is like when dieting is to do this whiplash bullshit where you have like one day where you like break down and have like an extra meal and you're like, no, I'm worthless. This will never work. And then you like the next day you eat like 8,000 calories cause you're hungry. And then like two, you feel sick the day after that. And then the third day, you're like, okay, that was a mistake, but I'm going to get back to dieting. And like, you do this every time a mistake happens because you assign so much moral weight to the mistake. But if you're chill about it and it's just like, oh, I ate a little bit too much today, whatever. Don't even restrict calories the next day. Just like, whatever. It's like, fine. You know? Um, yeah. Have a cheat day every once in a while. Who cares? Uh, eat whatever you want when like you're visiting friends or something. If you're at a restaurant, like, dude, dieting at a restaurant is like a fucking free ticket to misery, you know? Like, you smell food everywhere, and all your friends get these giant delicious meals, and you're just sitting there, and you're like, oh, I have, like, the sandwich and the salad. Like, ju like you just, like, just die right there. Like, just end it all. You know, fuck that. If you're out, if you're out at a, a, a restaurant, eat whatever you want. Maybe have, like, a little less later in the day, or, like, don't even. Who cares? Whatever. Go on a brisk walk. Have fun. Should sodium and canned soup be a concern? Probably, but I'm at the stage in my life where I don't have to worry about sodium. My heart's fine, and my dietary levels are all in balance. So, yeah, maybe when you're older, you have to cut down on sodium. But for right now, I don't have to care about it, so I don't really think about it. What about kidney stones? I, I think kidney stones are more of a soda thing, aren't they? I don't drink soda, so it's not a thing for me. I mean, all my levels are fine. I've never had a kidney stone. Do your health get better? You look recovered? Yeah, my costochondritis has gone down a lot from regular exercise and from... Um, uh, steroids. Oh yeah, drink enough water. What kind of exercise? Brisk walks. My chest isn't well enough yet for me to do weighted exercises. But it'll get there. Walking is very good, actually. Humans are pretty good at it. Yeah. If you live in a hilly area, which like 98% of Seattle is, there are usually some pretty difficult walking paths, too. Wait, I'm sorry, I saw on YouTube chat. Vosh takes steroids, no wonder he drops weight so fast. Antihistamine steroids. Not muscle growth steroids, not testosterone. <laughs> Why do you look at YouTube chat? I try to now and again. You guys would know if I was taking steroids for muscle growth because I would just tell you. I have no ethical conundrums whatsoever with people roiding up to get muscly if they want to. Fuck yeah, absolutely. Isn't it illegal? Can't it be bad for you? Yeah, it can. Adderall does help with losing weight, yeah, for sure. But yeah, messing with your hormones can be dangerous. I mean, I, I was in the bodybuilding forum for like five years or something. I, I, I know enough about like running proper test cycles that you could probably reasonably do it safely for like small effect. Um, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it's not a, it's, it's it, like, it's, it's not a huge deal.